Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Garden Worship Center. My name is Pastor Norman Lee Schaefer. And brothers and sisters, do you have some strife in your life? Do you have some trouble in your bubble? Do you have some haze in your days? Are you unhappy about the way things are living a life of discontent? Well, I got some good news for you. Today, we're going to talk about the art of contentment. So I pay $5 for a two hour movie and then realize that my flight is only 90 minutes long. I mean, come on. I'm so tired, I think I slept too much. Honey, the fridge is full. Babe, my coffee mug is too tall for the curing. What am I supposed to do with my leftover chicken fajitas? I'm hungry, but I'm not like hungry, hungry. I'm not hungry, hungry, I'm not hungry, hungry, I'm not hungry, hungry. I don't even know if I'm hungry. It's 11 o'clock and I don't know whether to eat breakfast or lunch. I think I'm hungry. I hate watching Blu-rays on this TV. It looks too real. I'm not even hungry. My phone is 4G, but we don't have 4G coverage where we live, so it's the worst. This is the worst. No, no, oh, oh, I clicked restart instead of shut down. I have to wait for it to start back up again so I can shut it down. I hate it. I'm like too healthy. I never get to use any of my sick days. Closet full of clothes, nothing to wear. My white noise machine broke last night and I didn't get any sleep. There's nothing to watch. There is nothing to watch. The bottom of my foot has been itching all day, but it tickles when I scratch it. I didn't finish brushing my teeth this morning. My battery died halfway through. <laughs> I hate that. My hair smells like Starbucks. My hand smells like Starbucks. My iPad smells like Starbucks. That's the worst. Mm. <laughs> I lost it. Ugh. Just shoot me. Ah, oh, just shoot me. Put me out of my misery. Kill me now. Just shoot me in the face. Wasn't I just chewing gum? I don't remember spitting it out. In life, it's easy to see the glass half empty instead of half full. In life, it's easy to see the hole instead of the donut. In life, it's easy to see what we don't have instead of what we do have. It seems we obsess over it at times and can never be content. The devil and the world tells us that what we have will simply never be enough. We will never be beautiful enough. We'll never be smart enough. We'll never be rich enough. We will simply never have enough of anything. Because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. But hold on, people. We need to refocus. We need an attitude adjustment. Contentment is learned. It is not a gift. It's not given. We must choose to have a life of joy and contentment in spite of the circumstances. We must believe that our worth is not found in things or accomplishments. It's found in Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> okay, guys. Come on. Come on. You got to help me out here. I'm working hard. Okay. Remember who you are in Christ, a sinner saved by grace, a lost sheep that the shepherd has found, a vessel that holds a treasure, a child of God saved by the blood of Jesus. Remember who you belong to and you will be content. Our key phrase today is choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. Our scripture is Philippians chapter four, verses 11 through 13. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. 
for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Writing from a Roman prison, Paul was at a time of great need, but even so, Paul expresses joy and contentment. Paul focuses on the concept of contentment regardless of his circumstances. Contentment is not automatic and it sure ain't a natural attitude. It is a learned skill. And Paul's experiences in life had offered him times of plenty as well as times of need. This allowed Paul to learn the secret of how to find joy regardless of his circumstances. Do you want to know a secret? How can you find true contentment? Well, first off, perspective. Paul was content because he could see life from God's point of view. He focused on what he was supposed to do to glorify God, not on what he felt he should have. Number two, priorities. Paul had his priorities straight and he was grateful for everything God had given him. Paul had detached himself from the non-essentials, temporary things, so that he could concentrate on the eternal things. And number three, power. The secret was drawing on Christ's power for strength. Learn to rely on God's promises and Christ's power to help you be content. Choose contentment and remember, Jesus is enough. Just like it's easy to spot someone who has an attitude of gratitude, a discontented grumbler is even easier to spot. Number one, a discontented grumbler is never satisfied with what they have. If it's money, they ain't got enough. If it's their home, they want a bigger one. They got their PhD in criticism and a master's degree in nitpicking. Never satisfied, never grateful, and never content. Number two, a discontented grumbler always has an excuse. It could have been their childhood. It could have been the government. Somebody did this or that. Somebody didn't do this or that. Excuses, excuses, excuses. And number three, a discontented grumbler thinks life is rigged against them. Deep down, they believe the cards aren't stacked in their favor. No matter how hard they try, they believe they're doomed to fail. A discontented grumbler can't see the blessing. Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Do I got to say it again? Yes. Jesus is enough. Can I get the crowd to say it? Jesus, Jesus is, is enough. enough. Thank you. <laughs> they think they just woke up. Does anybody enjoy listening to people gripe, complain, and whine? No? Well, neither does God. So let's look at Psalm 100. It's the cure for a discontented, grumbling heart. Psalm 100 verses 1 through 5 says this, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Number one, stop shouting negativity. Verse one said, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth, a discontented grumbling heart and a grateful contented heart direct their shout at different things. Start shouting God's praises. Even when it doesn't seem like you got a reason to praise, praise. Praise makes a grumbling heart begin to crumble. Don't be quiet about it. Get verbal. Show some excitement. Go public. Go viral. Scripture calls for feedback. An amen, a praise God. 
Grumblers are joyless. Until you start shouting God's praises, you'll stay that way. If you want a joy of contentment, you must shout for it. Choose contentment and remember, Jesus is enough. I shouted that one. Number two, change your tune. Verse two said, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Turn to somebody and say, you got to change your tune. <laughs> you got to change your, stop singing. Now I love country music. I spent most of my life making money in country music. Stop singing that same old country song. Stop singing that same old country song. You ever been around somebody who's always singing a sad song? Yes. A somebody a done somebody wrong song? <laughs> a poor, poor, pitiful me song? Yeah. A crying in the rain song? Yeah. It drags their spirit down and others with them. Now this week, I flew up to Nashville, Tennessee. I got to spend some time with a country superstar friend of mine, Virgil T. Bugtussle. Yes, I know. You heard of him, haven't you? While I was up there, Virgil, I, Virgil's, he's always singing a sad country song. And I said, Virgil, would you mind if I videotaped you for my, my audience down here in Bellevue, Florida? He says, I love to do it. I said, well, let's go. It was a little bit rain. It was raining that day and he was doing what he does, singing a, cat, a sad country song. So watch, watch this. <laughs> well, I was drunk the day my mom got out of prison. <laughs> and I went to pick her up in the rain. But before I could get to the station in my pickup truck, she got run over by a danged old train. Love song I wrote for Mama. <laughs> Let's give it up to Virgil. I never, <laughs> I never noticed it before, but I look a lot like him. Yeah. You ever been around somebody who's always singing a sad song? A somebody had done the wrong song, a poor, poor, pitiful me song. It drags their spirit down and others with them. You can't get rid of a grumbling, disconnected heart until you change your tune. Worship is about being content, glad, and joyful. You can't worship and grumble in the same breath. You can't sing a joyful song to God or anybody else for that matter when your heart is ungrateful and grumbling. Yeehaw! Can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw! <laughs> Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. Number three, change your perspective. Get the story straight. Verse three said, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Some folks don't even know they've been blessed. Who is God? The Lord is God. Who made you? He made you. Who do you belong to? We are his. Who's the shepherd? We're his sheep. He's our shepherd. There is very little I can control, but he controls everything. I don't have to live life striving, questioning, worrying, and being discontented. When we live life from the perspective that I am dependent on God, he created even the breath I breathe. Everything I have comes from him. He knows every hair on my head and every beat of my heart. When life is lived from that perspective, it's awfully hard to grumble and it's easy to be content. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. And number four, just say thanks and enjoy the ride. 
Verse four said, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Part of curing a grumbling heart is to enjoy and be thankful for the blessings you already have. Have an attitude of gratitude. First of all, give thanks that God is good. He gives us far more than we deserve. Amen on that. Number two, give thanks because God's love endures forever. There is nothing you could do to make God love you more and there's nothing you could ever do to make God love you less. Amen to that. And give thanks because God's faithfulness never runs out. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Amen to that. Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. The cure for a grumbling, discontented heart. Number one, stop shouting negativity. Number two, change your tune. Number three, change your perspective. Get the story straight. And number four, just say thanks and enjoy the ride. Hebrews chapter 13, verse five says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. When you are tempted to worry about how much you have and thinking you ain't got enough, set your mind on what he has said. He knows what you need and he will never, ever leave you. So brothers and sisters in Christ, rejoice and be content in what you have. You have him, our savior, Jesus. Choose contentment and remember Jesus is enough. Every journey begins with one step, one step of faith. Now I hope and pray this road less traveled would be blessed by you. With the wind at my back and the sun on my face, I will never walk alone. Got your sweet love to carry me We'll go there. Follow your words of truth. Made to be just like you. Though I'm not begging, no. Oh, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I know my journey began with one step. Though the path is straight, sometimes I lose my way. This road less traveled ain't so easy to walk, but I won't give up. No, I will never stop, cause I will never walk alone. Got your sweet love to carry me home. I raise my hands to the sky. We'll go there. Follow your words of truth. Led to be just like you. No, I'm not begging, no. Oh, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Cause I will never walk alone. Got your sweet love. To carry me home, I raise my hands to the sky. I keep my eye on the prize where your spirit leads. I will go there. Follow your words of truth, led to be just like you. Though I'm not begging, oh, I'm getting closer. I raise my hands to the sky. I keep my eye on the prize where your spirit leads. I will go there.
Now go and be the light. Ba, ah, 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 ah.